How's it going, everybody? Welcome to WeD Tech. Now, with the recent announcement of Intel's new 9th generation CPUs, we also got the new Z390 range of motherboards. Now, even though these motherboards are already available to purchase, whereas the new 9th generation CPUs are not, we still can actually use these boards with our current 8th generation Coffee Lake CPUs. So MSI sent over their new MPG Gaming Pro Carbon AC, which is one of their more higher-end mid-range gaming boards for us to take a look at and see how it performs with the current and available 8th generation 8700K. Now as for pricing, the Gaming Carbon Pro is retailing for around $220 or 4,300 Rand on Rebel Tech here in South Africa. But you do also get the non-AC version, which is a tiny bit cheaper. Uh, in dollars, I'm not really too sure how much it is. About four Rand, it is around 3,900 Rand, also available on Rebel Tech here in South Africa. Now, the main question is, uh, what is the difference between a Z370 and Z390? And honestly, it's not really uh, that big of a difference. So the difference is, is you just get a more USB 3.1 Gen 2 port that is natively for support through the chipset. You also get Intel's a new integrated 802.11 AC Wi-Fi that some of the boards have. And then probably one of the biggest differences is that these new Z390 boards mostly have a better VRM setups for higher and stable overclocking. So for the overclocking, we will take a look at how the Gaming Pro Carbon AC performs with the current 8700K. But first, let's quickly take a look at how the board looks and then also all of the features the board has. So starting off with the design, the Gaming Pro Carbon has a black and silver design with that carbon fiber accent on the extended I.O. cover and then also on the chipset heat spreader. RGB isn't too crazy on this board. You do get some RGB on the IO cover and then also underneath the board. And of course you do get a bunch of RGB headers, both five volt and 12 volt. Now controlling all of these blighting, you can use MSI's Mystic software that also allows you to control your RGB memory or even your RGB fans. Any RGB you have connected that will most likely be supported through MSI's Mystic lighting software so you can get an in-sync lighting show. Now, a memory support, it does have a max of 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory that you can take up to 4,400 megahertz with an XMP profile overclock. The memory modules also has like a chrome steel reinforced enforcement to help prevent the board from flexing when installing your memory and it also just looks nice and fancy so that's a plus. As for your PCI Express uh, ports, you do get three PCI Express uh, 3.0 full-time slots with the top one running at 16 times speed, the mid run running at 8 times speed, and the bottom one running at 4 times speed. So it does support a two-way SLI and a three-way crossfire. You do also get uh, some additional PCI Express 3.0 one-time slots for any additional add-on cards you might want to add. As for storage options, you do get two M.2 slots, uh, both being PCI Express 3.04x speeds, uh, with the top one supporting the extremely long 22.1.10 SSDs, with the bottom one supporting up to 22.80, but this one does also have an integrated heat spreader. Along with that, you do get a six SATA three ports that does support RAID 0, 1, 5 and 10 whereas the M.2 supports RAID 0 and 1. Now just also a quick mention when using both the M.2s and the SATA ports at the same time uh, just check out the manual some of the SATA ports will be disabled uh, depending on which config you use so just make sure if you are using all of your different SATA and M.2 ports. Now taking a look at your back I.O., you do get a very nice integrated I.O. shield. You also get your PS2 combo ports, two USB 3.2 type A ports, your display port, an HDMI port, one USB 3.1 Gen 2 type C port, three USB 3.1 Gen 2 type A ports, your gigabit ethernet port, your AC 802.11 Wi-Fi connectors, your HD audio connectors, and then also your optical SPDIF out ports. 
Now then just for power, you do get your standard 24 a pin for your motherboard ATX power. And then you do also get an 8 plus 4 12 volt power connection for your CPU. So you will be able to add a bit more power towards your CPU for higher overclocking. Uh, but yeah, for 8700K, it's not really that necessary. Now, just some other ports you get on the board. You do get your USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type C for your front I/O, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports for your front I/O as well, two USB 2.0 connections, one 4-pin CPU fan header, one 4-pin water pump header, five 4-pin fan headers, and then also just your easy debugging LEDs. Now getting into the most important part about this board, which is overclocking, of course. So the Gaming Pro Carbon AC uses a 12 choke, four plus two phase power delivery system that is doubled with two high side and two low side fates. For the high side, it uses a four CO2 a nine fate, and for the low side, it uses the four CO2 four low side fed. All of this is also being controlled by a UP952 or one P. PWM controller. Now, as for our overclock and our VRM attempts, I was able to overclock my 8700K to 5.1 gigahertz at a 1.35 volts, where the VRMs was just ranging around 90 degrees uh, in a blender benchmark. So that was actually completely fine. Uh, this was also in an open test bench with an ambient temperature of around 30 degrees. So I could have pushed it a bit higher to maybe 5.2 gigahertz hurts but my CPU was just running a bit too hot with my ML240RS. It just couldn't keep up with that high temperatures. And uh, now again, the ambient temperature was a bit but high. Uh, I don't really have an aircon in my room, so that also played a major factor. But now by just looking at these temperatures, we can see that the board is completely fine for the A700K, also at a, a much higher overclock. That is where I'd like to see how the new ninth generation CPUs will perform on the board, either the 9700K or the 9900K. I do think that is where we will see higher temperatures, uh, much higher temperatures, uh, and then also that you're gonna get that extra more power uh, delivery with that extra four pin for the CPU. But now getting back into the difference between the Z370 and the Z390, do you get more performance out with a Z390 running an 8700K? And the answer is not really. You do get a tiny bit more that I saw on my benchmarks with encoding, but gaming wise and all of the other applications, you didn't really get a a increase. Uh, it might have been a tiny bit, but it was not enough to really say confirmative that uh, this board does deliver better performance. So difference between those on the current A7K is not really worth it. I'd still like to see how the ninth generation will perform on a Z370. So that one will come out a bit later. So now just my final thoughts on the new Z390 platform and then also MSI's a new board. Firstly, the board is a really nice board. Uh, it's not a crazy expensive for a, for a more higher end a board, uh, but you do get everything you, that you would need. A good VRM setup, you do get all of the ports that you would want. You're going to be able to SLI three-way crossfire, two M.2 slots, pretty much everything that you would want from a, a nice mid-high range a board. But for the Z390 platform, if you are currently just running a 8700K or even lower than that, there's no real reason to go for a Z390 new motherboard. If you are looking to get an entirely new system with the ninth generation CPUs, uh, again, we will have to see once those are actually out and how they perform. But I do believe for those, especially if you go for some of the higher end CPUs like the 9700K or the 9900K, that is where the more higher end or the better Z390 boards is going to come into action with that better VRM setups. But of course, before making your entire decision, just wait for the new ninth generation CPUs to come out. Uh, let us see how they actually perform and if they are worth buying over the current eighth generation CPUs. 
So a big thanks to MSI for sending over the Gaming Pro Carbon for this review and then also for sending over our MSI uh, Meg Z390 Ace that we're going to take a look at a bit later as well. So that is the version just above this one. So uh, also just below their godlike board. So that is quite a a high-end board. So again, we will have to wait and see once the ninth generation CPU comes out uh, to throw it on that board and see how it performs. But now that's pretty much it. If you guys did like this review, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. And then I will check all of you guys in the next video. Cheers, guys.